This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above. And everything that we're talking about here today, oh my, oh my, oh my, things are happening almost daily now with the breaking news. Attorney General General Michael Barr has just released a new enforcement framework for cryptocurrency. Now, this is on the heels of Chris Larson making the statement that Ripple's considering moving their headquarters to another part of the world which I don't think is something that's going to have to happen. Let's go ahead and get started. Real quick, let's start with this. Shout out to Perry Ann Boring, who has been a huge component in educating people from Congress members to businesses with the Digital Chamber of Commerce and everything that they're doing there. Just listen to uh, real quick what she says here in this exchange on CNBC. Um, It's a fascinating effort to try to get get Congress to understand what's really happening here uh, behind crypto. There are questions, by the way, about whether these donations, if this this $50 $50 of Bitcoin turns into I don't know what, uh, does it it create any any legal ethical issues? No, absolutely not. Look, the best way to learn something new is to experience experience it for yourself. And we want our elected officials to experience the power of blockchain technology in their own hands. And our hope is that members will start to understand the critical importance blockchain technology is going to play in the global economy for many generations to come. That's the point of us. How much of, though, is this an effort at at pushing Congress to, I imagine, create laws or or open up some laws around cryptocurrencies and blockchain and the like? And how much of it is about dealing with the regulatory uh, complex? Because to some degree, ultimately, it's going to be the Treasury Department and it's going to be the SEC, which is going to decide the fate and future of all of this, no? It's bigger than that. Blockchain technology is the most important technological innovation we will see in our lifetimes. Blockchain is the financial infrastructure of the new digital economy. Look, there's many other nations like China, Singapore, Japan, Switzerland, the European Union. They understand this and they are all racing to have dominance in this space. And the U.S. isn't even on the playing field. This would be a significant challenge to both our national security and our economic security to have foreign actors controlling the systems and the governance that will power the digital economy. This is our message. Well, there you go. And I don't think you can say it any better than that. And Chris John Carlo really laid it down crystal clear is what he says about it. And Perry, I'm, Perry Ann Boring absolutely makes it crystal clear that we can't have foreign actors and foreign governments controlling the uh, digital financial system. It just is not going to work. And to add motion to what's going on and the fact that Chris Larson had been very vocal about the idea of having to move the headquarters if we don't see the proper kind of motion forward, uh, we take this to another level of clarity today and we bring to you this just in here, Attorney General William Barr, shout out to Big Skinny for this one announces publication of Cryptocurrency Enforcement Act. It's not that long, even though it looks like a lot. Let me just go through the three points that are covered in this after I read you just some of the opener of this right here. So Attorney General William P. Barr announced today the release of Cryptocurrency Enforcement Framework, a publication produced by Attorney General Cyber Digital Task Force. The framework provides a comprehensive overview of emerging threats and enforcement challenges associated with the increasing prevalence and use of cryptocurrency. Details the most important relationships that the Department of Justice has built with regulatory and enforcement partners both within the United States government and around the world and outlines the department's response strategies. So 
it explains here we know what cryptocurrency uh, is a technology we know all of that it lays down here at the fbi we see firsthand dangers about all of this for illicit activity and goods for criminals in the dark web you know the most of, you know how that rolls right so cryptocurrencies and distributed ledger technology present tremendous promise for the future but it's critical that these important innovations follow the law the cryptocurrency enforcement framework provides the public with the important information intended to help them understand and comply with their obligations under the legal regimes that govern these new and fast developing technologies said task force member brian c rabbit the acting assistant attorney general for the Cr criminal division while the department of justice and its partners are committed to supporting the advancement of legitimate cryptocurrency technologies and uses, we will not hesitate to enforce the laws that govern these technologies when necessary to protect the public. It's all about protecting the public, right? So, okay, let's get into these three different parts here that they lay out for the enforcement framework. Opens with an introductory essay authored by the task force chair, Associate Deputy Attorney General Sujit Ramon. On, and it says here, part one, the framework provides a detailed threat overview cataloging the three categories into which most illicit use of cryptocurrency typically fall. One, financial transactions associated with commission of a crime or of crimes, money laundering and the shielding of legitimate activity from tax reporting or other legal requirements. I will remind you right now to go check the description box or the comment section of the videos and make sure you contact Clinton Donnelly if you have an issue with your taxes and cryptocurrencies. Crimes such as theft directly implicating the cryptocurrency marketplace itself. Part two explores the various legal and regulatory tools at the government's disposal to confront the threats posed by cryptocurrencies illicit use and highlights the strong and growing partnership between the Department of Justice and the Securities Exchange Commission and the Commodities Futures Commission and the agencies within the Department of the Treasury, among others, to enforce federal law in the cryptocurrency space. Are you seeing that? Because that collectively lines up very well with the talk that we heard the other day from the Digital Chamber of Commerce from Jay Clayton and Brian Brooks, which broke down that exact conversation and said that there's several Several agencies and we're all working together in a very unified manner to make sure we all understand our role and where our scope of, of uh, uh, work and protection come and where it trades off with another entity or regulatory agency. So again, looking at the final enforcement framework includes uh, concludes in part three with the discussion of the ongoing challenges the government faces in cryptocurrency enforcement, particularly with respect to business models employed by certain cryptocurrency exchanges, platforms, kiosks, and casinos, and to activity like mixing, tumbling, chain hopping, and certain instances of jurisdictional arbitrage that may facilitate criminal activity. Come on in. Listen here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you ever wanted to know whether the U.S. is dragging its feet or not, I'm telling you right now, I hate to fly in the face of Chris Larson and what he's saying, but I'm seeing motion here. I've seen motion out of the OCC. I've seen motion out of the SEC. I'm seeing motion from the Attorney General of the United States. I've even seen a bill with three cryptocurrency bills tucked into it passed recently as far as any bill has gotten to date through the House of Representatives now headed to the Senate. And you're considering moving to headquarters? Oh, I don't think so. Now, if it's a call to action, I think that's fantastic. Certainly need a call of action, call to action here. But what I would say is this: let me find, uh, let me find this because this is Chris's uh, comments, obviously that he made. But I wanted to show this remark here. Shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf here. U.S. Comptroller of Currency Brian Brooks says. The future of cryptocurrency, listen to this, the future of cryptocurrency will be decided by the people and the markets, but not the government. 
You got that? And that's a fact, Jack. The open free market, the people in the markets, not the government. The government is great at setting up regulatory frameworks, but not building products. Brian Brooks gets this better than anybody I've heard in the years I've been in this space. And what that tells me is, is the, and I don't know if you realize this, but let's highlight this again. You know, the OCC has the ability to craft regulation that does not need approval from another regulatory agency out here. Now, granted, his scope of what he can cover and range of what he covers is the federally chartered banking system. But isn't that what we're talking about here, at least for XRP? Broadly? Of course it is. So the reality is, is that I'd love to see the legislation move through the Senate and then get signed and made into law and the whole bit. But with that being said, we could have someone like Brian Brooks and couple that with FSOC, another regulatory agency to the Treasury. We could also see the Federal Reserve, for that matter, come out. Did you know that not only FSOC can make something systemically important to the financial system, but the Federal Reserve can as well? Bet you didn't know that fun little fact, did you? So the truth is, is we could actually get the regulatory clarity we need from agencies right now without the need to have it from Congress. Oh, yes. And that could become a regulatory sandbox, as it were, right? So... Now, with that being said, I would love to see Congress go ahead and put these things through because it looks like the bills that were submitted with the Digital Commodities Exchange Act and the uh, taxonomy and all of that that's with it, it appears those bills are defined enough but still open enough to not stifle the innovation as we move forward. However, I would like to see, at the very least, FSOC, the Treasury itself, and Brian Brooks further speak on this because then we're talking about money from the Treasury, FSOC from Enforcement and Oversight Council. And then we're talking about the federally chartered banking system with the OCC. And what you're getting there, I believe, if they speak on it collectively and the Fed, because let's not forget the Fed. OK, by the way, you know. When Chris is thinking about moving, let's not move so fast, Chris, because, you know, the reality here is this. Chris said they might move. They're getting frustrated. There's frustration there because, you know, two years ago, he said this was the best place for fintech to be able to uh, uh, launch a company and, and to do something out of the whole world. He said that. I played that clip the other day. But the reality is, is where did all of this start? All of this really got started to take root with the Federal Reserve Faster Payments Task Force, which has the ability to be able to declare an entity systemically important to the financial system, as does the Treasury, and along with the Treasury. So this all started there. Remember that? 2015, the, the task force was put together. 2017, Ripple improves the speed and transparency of global payments. So you would have to think that if they're planning on moving out of town, Right. If they're planning on moving out of town, that all of this started with the Federal Reserve and the 300 plus participants on that panel, on that task force. So the rest of the world could benefit from it, except for the Fed in the United States. I'm sorry, but I'm not a buyer. The reality for me is, is that when you couple that thought along with what just came out today from the U.S. Attorney General William Barr, to me, I see motion like we've never seen before. And as far as I'm concerned, things are imminent at this point. And it's imminent in a good way. All right, guys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. I would love to know your thoughts. Make sure you share with somebody you know. And don't forget to check out the description box and the comment section for anything that you may need. We have some very trusted products, services, and links in there just for you. When you're on the Internet, don't just click on anything. Know where you're going to get what you need. All right, I'll catch all of you on the next one. Take care.